Welcome to day two of the Bio World Congress here in Des Moines. Things kicked off yesterday with a welcome reception and bioeconomy tours. Today, the exhibit floor is open and breakout sessions are rocking. Already this morning, it's clear to see why this is a premier event for anyone working across industrial biotechnology or ag tech. From gene editing to biofuels to renewable chemicals, there's something for anyone working across the two sectors. This morning, USDA hosted a packed breakout session where they outlined the progress of the bio-based product industry and highlighted the progress of the USDA BioPrefer program. Joining me here today at the BioBus Center is Kate Lewis, Senior Program Analyst with USDA's BioPrefer program. Kate, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Connor. So tell us a little bit about what USDA's BioPrefer program does and what it means for the industry. Yeah, I really appreciate um, the opportunity to share additional information about BioPreferred. It's actually the Bio-Based Markets Program. It's a USDA-led initiative. It's been in place for about 15 years. Um, and the goal of the BioPreferred program is to increase the purchase, development, and use, or really development, purchase, and use of bio-based products. And these products, you mentioned renewable chemicals. Mm -hmm. They can be upstream uh, products like bio-based materials, um, as well as downstream finished consumer-focused products. Great, and I mentioned you did have a busy morning. You had a packed breakout session where you outlined the economic progress of this industry, and then you had a media briefing after where you kind of dove, dove a little bit deeper into those economic numbers. Can you give us an idea of the advancement of the industry? Yeah, you know, in implementing the BioPreferred program every day, we see on a qualitative perspective the industry and how it's advancing through the applications that we're processing and the type and quality and breadth of companies that we're supporting. Mm -hmm. Again, the goal of our program is to work with these companies to identify innovative bio-based product materials, upstream chemicals, as well as downstream materials. And so it's natural um, in a program's implementation phase to look at and begin to question what our impact has been. And so this latest report that we released doesn't exactly impact or, or show the, the impact of the program per se on the industry and quantifies our program's effect. It looks a little bit bigger picture and broader picture just about the growth of the bio-based products industry in general. Now this is a periodic report that our program commissioned and um, we released some information today um, that shows the state of the bio-based industry is strong. The bio-based products industry is strong. Um, right now the industry is bringing back um, in terms of value to the United States something along the lines of 459 billion dollars and this represents about a 17 percent increase um, than when we measured this impact back in 2014. So that's pretty rapid growth. Um, it's steady, okay. and I think that's um, I, I think that's important when you consider that, um, as you know, and bio attendees know, and folks that are in the biotechnology industry, it's a it's a hard climb. Um, the growth of this industry because it's dependent on a number of non-competitive barriers associated with oil prices and federal policy. So we're really pleased that not only industry growth is trending upwards, it's trending upwards at a steady pace, and then that industry growth carries a jobs growth with it as well. Mm -hmm. um, another impact is that the bio-based product industry is responsible for about 4.6 million jobs in addition to the revenue that it's bringing. Um, and that's that's really important when you consider that um, you know the, the jobs around the production and transportation and um, distribution and modification of these feedstocks you know we're, we're talking feedstocks we're here in Des Moines Iowa Absolutely. in the Midwest it all starts with the crops and the feedstocks and so that jobs growth represents about a 10% increase again in jobs accounted for in the bioproducts industry than when we measured it a couple years ago as well so steady growth increasing that's what we like to see and that impact as as you mentioned is felt right here in Des Moines and especially in America's heartland and in the Midwest where a lot of these jobs are. And so the, the USDA's BioPrefer program and that growth has led to the adoption of more bio-based products and renewable chemicals. Which product have you seen the most growth in? Um, definitely renewable chemicals, I'd have to say. Uh, again, the, the program 
identifies and certifies and validates bio-based products in several hundred categories, but certainly within the last 10 years, the, the fastest growth we've seen in terms of just chemistry innovations and um, consumer awareness and sophistication of downstream buyers and end user consumers who really are desiring these, these um, formulations to remanufacture into downstream products and consumers themselves. They're becoming more sophisticated. They want to know what's in these products that they're buying, putting on themselves, wearing, and um, renewable chemicals as a, a building block for those finished products. Huge amount of growth there. Um, um, just because of the supply chain, the investment structure, and, and how you're seeing um, optimization really occur. And so those renewable chemicals will eventually lead to hopefully some more sustainable products where you see bioplastics starting to become more popular and starting to enter to the market. The idea is that these renewable chemicals can then lead to more bio-based products down the road. Yeah, just like the feedstocks are the building blocks for renewable chemicals, renewable chemicals, bio-based renewable chemicals, identified and certified by our program as USDA certified bio-based products, they're the building blocks for, and critical building blocks, for the downstream consumer-focused products. So it's pretty exciting to be here. Well, we're excited to have you here. As I mentioned, you had a pack breakout session this morning. Give me an idea of what you're looking forward to the most this week. Oh, bio is always a great conversation. Um, you know, our I saw our breakout session today, 8.30 in the morning, just engaged stakeholders, representatives of the industry. What I'm looking for over the next two or three days is really the opportunity to continue the conversation with really smart, focused, energetic, energetic contacts and I think we'll have an opportunity to continue that conversation through the refreshment breaks, the one-on-one -on -one meeting partnering, um, the receptions. You know, later tonight we're going to be at a reception at the World Food Prize. What, what a background to continue these critical conversations about the future of industrial biotech. Absolutely. And Kate, I want to thank you for stopping by the Buzz Center. And for those following along online, be sure to check back for more videos this week as we continue to interview those who are attending the Bio World Congress and continue to join the conversation, as Kate mentioned, by using hashtag BioWC19.